Okay, so today we're gonna make bunny butts and we have plenty of time to do it. I'm gonna show you the fibers we're gonna be working with and just a few things you might gather to make yours. Uh, so let me pull out some fibers for you to look at first. These are some of our MC1 bats and I brought in three different pinks just so you could see them all together. Because pinks are just fun maybe for like the bottoms of your little bunny feet. So this is our orchid pink, this is soft pink, and this is powder pink. And I'm only gonna work with one, but I thought you might like to see them all together and up close. You can use honestly any colors you want for a project like this, and I'm just sharing with you the colors that I'm working with today. This is our chestnut brown. This is willow, which is the little uh, bunny pin that I'm wearing. This is cafe au lait. Um, which is the one, the little bunny in my little pot, that's Cafe LA. This is Lemongrass, and this is Shire. And we have so many greens, we have so many earth tones, there's so many things you can choose from, but I just wanted to show you what we're working with today. For those of you who don't know, um, MC1 batting is our signature fiber, it is all made from sheep raised right here on U.S. farms. It's not carbonized. It's a batting. You'll get to see today how we work with it. You can use it for wet felting or needle felting. It's just really, really versatile. All right, everyone. Thank you for being here for our Bunny Butts Drive Me Nuts Surprise Felt Along. A fun little project for spring. You could make something like this into a tiny pin cushion, a cute little decoration, or a refrigerator magnet. This one can also be a pin like I was wearing. It could become a greeting card. It could become a refrigerator magnet also. Just something silly and cute and really fun to make. Maybe you just wanna brighten a friend's day. So I'm gonna show you how we made these. And this are the fibers that I'm working with today. Our MC1 batting, mostly in the colors that I showed you. And then I brought in some uh, just locks that I had in my stash. These are short dark locks, big long bright, bright locks, and this is sari silk waste. This stuff is actually made from recycled saris, and um, then it gets dyed. It's like this stringy, crazy stuff. So you have to be able to give up all control to work with this, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then I have our core wool, which some of you are very familiar with. This is the roving form. We have it in a batting or roving. Some things you might want to have are just some glue. Uh, I am also using little bits of cardboard for the tiny pieces. So just some rigid cardboard if you have it um, laying around. It could be anything, a business card, uh, corrugated cardboard, anything that's just a little tiny piece of cardboard. I brought along some wood discs in case you want to make a refrigerator magnet or something like that and one of these I glued a magnet to the back. So these are some things that you might have prepped. And this is just a lid to a, like a ball jar and that's what I'm going to build my little mound in instead of a flower pot. Okay, so let me tell you just a little bit about this mound. As I mentioned, the mound is in a ball jar a lid and that just gives me the shape. You could make this little mound out of the core wool, and I made mine out of shredded, shredded scraps. I ran them through my drum carter and made them, um, made a little bat with it. This is how I make a ball or a mound. A ball or a mound are kind of, kind of the same thing. So start with your strip, and you're going to roll it like a, uh, a log just roll it like a log and then you can tuck the ends in and alternate it like this to get it to be kind of round the tighter you mash it the less you're going to have to needle felt it so you can add a whole bunch mine is not super rock hard but add as much as you want and then while it's still in this shape you're just going to start to needle felt it and tack down what was that loose end and what you can do is use whatever shape you have to start to build that mound. Let me grab my, um, like I just used it inside of my disc and start shaping it to whatever is your base shape. So you're gonna wanna build your mound. I like to shape it while it's still loose and fluffy. I'm just using four or 
yeah, four 42 triangles all rubber banded together, which is my new favorite tool. So you want to get your base shape pretty much how you want it before you cover it with any color. And notice that I'm just kind of shaping the top, but as you shape the top, kind of work your way down to the foam or whatever's going to be your platform. When you needle felt, you want to really work around the entire piece and go to the middle, to the middle, to the middle. Notice that I'm not going all the way through to the foam. There's no reason to. We want to compress everything into the center and make a nice dense mass. So now my bottom is still really loose and fluffy and now's a great time to kind of compress in straight into the bottom and flatten that out. If you're going to use a fine needle, use a bunch so that you they have impact. If I'm just going to use a single 42 needle, I'll be at this all day and it's very unsatisfying. But when you've got a bunch of needles together, even if they're fine, they'll do good work in pressing things down. If you this is a 38 spiral, you could hold one or two of these and do about as much work as I'm doing with those four. I just find holding the four very comfortable. So you could also use a 36 triangle or a 32 triangle. I like to get my base shape pretty much in place before I add the top. And what we'll do is we'll put, we'll put dirt and grass on this and then we'll jump over to the one that I have in my little lid. And I'll show you about getting a smooth surface and we'll add some texture too. Okay, so I have this, uh, this is lemongrass and this is Shire. And I just wanna blend the two of them a little bit so I don't have just one color. And so I'm just gonna stack them and just mix them up a bit. You don't have to do that, but it's fun sometimes to get a little variation in your color. And then you really only need a single layer. And if you're gonna do dirt like mine, then you can leave the middle open. So let's put a little more of our wool around the edges and cover the bottom if you want to. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. Depending on what you're gonna do with yours, you might even put felt on the bottom or something different. So I'm just piecing in a single layer. Um, and what you'll notice about these bats is that it's a very short fiber, so you can put down little tiny pinches. If you have a hole or something, you can just patch right over it. So now I'm gonna put just a little patch of dirt right over the top. You don't have to put dirt but mine's gonna be digging in the dirt. And it can be a little or a lot, whatever. And I'm gonna treat it, when I cover something with wool, I'm gonna treat it like shelf paper. So in this case, I am going to start right here in the middle. I'm being delicate. I'm not like plunging all the way through to the center. I'm just trying to tack down the surface. And I'm gonna work my way out this way so that I don't create any folds or bumps in my fiber. So work around your whole piece. It's good to use your fine or semi-fine needles for this, your 42s, your 40s. And just make sure that every area is covered. Remember, you can go back and patch it in after. So keep needle felting your piece, and I'm going to jump over to this one because I want to show you, and we might just get in a little bit closer just for this segment. I want to show you something that's been... Uh, how we kind of smooth it versus it not being finished. So allow us to just zoom in here for a second. There's two sides to this piece. This piece is a little more smooth, but not 100% finished. This way, here, uh, smooth, but not 100% finished. And this piece is still a little loose. So the only difference is time. Not different needles, just time. So if your piece looks like this, loose and fluffy, and you can pull it off, keep going. If you want loose stuff, make it intentional, add it later, but keep going. So I'm gonna needle felt mine. I'm gonna do these shallow compressions and just needle felt it down so that it's all nice and flat. Now, one of the most common things we get asked is how do you get rid of needle marks? And so my most common answer is really to suggest that then rather than try and get rid of needle marks, think about the needle marks as showing you, for the most part, like in first level, 
where the compression has gone. So instead, I want you to go back and needle felt the areas that are not showing needle marks. Get really, really close to your project and just sit and poke at various angles. You can poke like this angle, you can turn it around and poke it from a different angle. If you really wanna get rid of those needle marks, poke everything else down as far as, until it feels almost level with those needle marks. And once you feel like you've really tackled that, and this one is not there, I promise, um, the firmer it is, the easier that will be to achieve. But once you feel like you're there, then you can rough it up a little bit and notice that the fibers don't move around. You can also drag your needle across a little bit. But let that be, you know, your meditative needle felting where you really poke it and press it and get it all nice and flat. Okay? So we're going to jump to our bunny now. If once you have your little mound, we're going to jump to our bunny. So we're going to raise this up just a little bit. Okay, so you want your bunny butt to be sticking up out of your dirt if you if you have dirt and I'm going to start with just this little tiny bit of core wool and make a, a bead almost like the mound that we made. So I'm going to start first by rolling my little tube and then tuck the ends in. Roll this one really tight so that you uh, have a lot of the fibers really close together to start and you don't want to make it so big. Um, that it's too big for your sculpture. So I think that's probably pretty close. I'm gonna go one more round so that I can uh, compress it fully. And when you have extra that you don't want, just tear it off and hold tight onto the rest that you have. Tear that off. I know it doesn't seem like I tore much off because I didn't. <laughs> Wrap all the rest around and hold it really tight until you can tack it down. I'm only using the core wool um, so that I don't have to use all of the cotton white. You could just use whatever color you want for your little bunny. And your butt could be round or not so round, but we're basically going to put it on here just like that. So you don't want to needle felt it 100% because you want to attach it down to this. If you want to cover it with a color, get your shape pretty well in place and then cover it with whatever color you want your bunny butt to be. I'm going to cover him with this is Cafe au lait, so I'm going to make him like my other bunny. And all you need is a little single layer, so let the wool wrap around once. Make sure you have enough to go all the way around. Pull off any excess, and with the top too, you can just give it a nice little fold, as long as it's loose and wispy. So this is a very thin layer. You don't want any big folds. So pull off all the extra, just like, just like that, and then wrap this around. So you have a loose little cover, and then we're just gonna tack this down. If you're more comfortable, you can use your single needle, but use your fine needles. So as you're looking at your ball, you're gonna decide which part seems like the underneath side and which part seems like the part you want sticking up. I'm going to shape this a little bit more and then we're going to attach it to our dirt mound because I want to decide where's that, you know, who's, my, my, my mound has a bit of a slope this way and it definitely needs refining, but I feel like I want it to kind of, let me turn it towards me a second, I want it to kind of be like this. Now I have some feet uh, prepared, so my little, these aren't going to be the feet, uh, but these I'm just going to use as my planning feet, so I need to flatten what will be the bottom so that he'll lay on there nicely. So go ahead and flatten the bottom just like we did with the mount. Okay, now you're gonna to wanna to pull out one of your coarser needles to attach it to the mount. I'm gonna take this needle and I'm gonna kinda of go underneath first, right underneath all of the edges and through even to the middle. So, I'm not just doing the perimeter, but I am also doing the perimeter. And once he's on there, you can even add more fiber over the top if you want. You know, uh, you know whether you need to cover some more of the brown or whatever, but you're gonna be adding a tail in the feet. So now I'm going back to my, my crunch needle and I'm gonna start to kind of shape him down to the mound, just like we shape the mound down to your foam or whatever's your surface. Really crunch it down there now you know, so that he can be kind of buried in the dirt. Okay, that bunny butt is pretty firm. He's been doing bunny buns of steel. Okay, so we can decide whether his feet come off this side 
his feet can come off this side of the mound like that and this side all be open or he could be buried in this way. That's where we're going to put the feet. And this is just a suggestion of feet. So here's how we make those feet. So whatever's the color of your bunny butt, you're going to want to pull off enough for both feet at the same time. So here, I'll make my fiber even. And I'm going to pull off, in this case, I'm going to pull off, it's only about, you know, a, about the length of my hand. I'm going to pull off one piece. Then I'm going to split that piece in half. And each of these is going to be a foot. So pull off two equal lengths of fiber. Even if you don't get the size that you want, then you'll have something uh, to work with and to gauge from. So fold it first and see how the size looks. So I'm going to fold down about a third of the top and I'm going to fold that in once. It's about as thick as my thumb maybe. In again, three, I'm going to say four is probably enough for these feet and you'll see why. So I'm going to pinch off the extra. And I'm going to just go ahead and make another one. Let me just tack this so it stays. I'm going to make this one too. And now we've got these big lofty mounds. Make one and get it how you want it. So we take that big lofty mound and we just tack the loose fibers down. I'm using my fine needle now. And the first thing I'm going to do is start compressing the fiber. Notice that I'm not doing this. I'm only barely hitting that foam. Notice that I'm leaving the top and the ends unfelted. Don't tack those down. Leave them loose and wispy just for the moment. After about a minute or so, flip it over and do this side. We're building mass and density into the shape first by compressing and then we're going to go right into the sides and push all of that fiber to the center. So this is what your cardboard is good for. If you feel like your fingers are getting hit, then use this cardboard and block your fingers from getting hit by the needle. We want to go into all sides of this. Don't spend too much time on one side. And we are just condensing that fiber down. Now you can make, you could draw these shapes out if you want, if you want to be really exact. You could draw them out on paper or cardboard first and use that as a guide. Um, I usually just wing it on the first one. And then the first one is used as a guide for the second one. You could also lay it, you know, on the foam. And be real gradual, like notice you're creating lines in here. So you want to go back and just keep correcting. Meaning this, this, if you're driving it in here and this is loose, then now you're going to come back and needle felt into the sides. So we've been real gradual with this using our 42. Now you have a little more density in this piece. And if you want, you can even switch to a, a little more firmer needle just for the moment. This is a 38 spiral. Flip it over. We're just building mass and shaping that foot. And it's loose. There's plenty of room to keep tightening that. And honestly, this takes the longest time is making a piece that is, mm, I don't know, quarter inch thick or so and dense. It's easy to start with too little wool and not have enough to actually build a really firm shape. So I encourage you to start with what seems like more fiber than you need so that you have it to push in and shape. So what you do is once you have one foot where you want it, now that uh, we're getting kind of close, we can really start to use our more aggressive needle to shape it. Once you have one foot done, then you use that as the model for the second foot. So it will be your template or your shape driver. And if you plan to make a bunch of these, you will benefit from maybe even cutting out in cardboard shapes like this. Uh, the same shapes that you want to make and then you'll just use those as your little templates. So I'm going to make this one kind of fast. Okay, so once you get about to this point, and again, this foot's definitely still in draft mode, but once you get about to this part, then you can hold the two together and start shaping this one to match the first one. 
it always helps. Just hold them together and then just do them in parallel, just like that. So you have your choice now, once you have your feet, and again, these are just draft feet, so keep going on your feet. Let them be nice and felted, nice and firm. You don't want them to be uh, squishy and mushy like mine are. But once you have your feet, then you can put the little paw pads on either now or after you get it on your Benny. It really depends on how you're feeling. So attach your feet by needle felting all the way through, just like we did on the mound and you can needle felt them right all the way through, just like this. Get underneath there and you can kind of shape them to your bunny as you go. If your feet are a little more firm formed than mine, um, then you'll have more to work with under there. And let's just put some little pink on the paw pads just so we can show how to make some little circles. So notice that I just grabbed a tuff of fiber and then I'm gonna shape it. You know, play with this shape. You can have ovals, you can have circles, you can have toes or no toes. I don't really know what bunny's feet look like, so bunny persons, forgive me. Okay, I can't really see that foot, but add your feet however you want and add your little paw pads. I'm gonna have to work on mine. And play with your feet however they wanna go, but let's get our tail on. Now, I prepped a tail because I wanna show you, this tail is just, just a little ball, right? Just like we made the bunny butt, you make the little ball. But let's say you wanna make it kind of a little more fuzzy. So needle felt a tiny bead. Don't make it rock hard necessarily. Just needle felt a tiny bead. And then pull off a couple of tufts of your white. And you might crisscross them like this and put your little tail ball right in the middle and then pull these fibers kind of up like this so that it's gonna stick off the bunny butt a little bit. Yes. Pack it on first. And then we can tame those down, but this way it'll be like a really fluffy little tail. So I'm gonna just lightly, lightly tack these down, but I'm gonna leave the ends kind of sticking up. And that way you have a nice firm ball in the tail, but then you can also have some wispies sticking up. And if you have a longer fiber, uh, like a New Zealand Corydale or Merino Top or something, you could use that instead. I was just working 100% with the MC1 today. And you can use your coarser needle if you want and really anchor it on there, but you don't need to sew it on or anything. You can just um, needle felt it right in place, especially if you have that solid ball inside, then it's really gonna be well attached. And maybe this is a little much, so I'll just pull that off. But it can still be fuzzy. He can still be fuzzy and firm underneath and well attached. Now, if you wanna add some um, and I know mine's really rough, so, but if you want to add some sari silk waist or locks or something around it, then you don't have to fuss, you know, with all this perimeter a great deal. And you can be a little hairy carry about it. So dig in your stash, or you might even use some yarn or something. These are two completely different fibers. This is uh, basically like our MC1 before it's carded. And this is something in crazy long. Uh, this is, um, a tease water and you can just have some fun in there and needle felt these things down. I like to just kind of get a little silly sometimes with the, the texture and just get it all in there. The sari silk waist is kind of crazy. You're going to have to cut it. It comes in these long lengths and if you try to tame it or pull it apart, you'll probably drive yourself a little crazy. And as I mentioned, you got to let go a little bit of control with it. So just have fun with that and maybe tack it down even right over on top of all this other stuff. That's if you just want it to be hairy carry. Now mine's not even gonna be a pin cushion that's just gonna sit on some shelf. <laughs> Come out once a year and sit on a shelf here because Lord knows I have enough pin cushions at this point. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep filling mine in and decorating it and I hope to see what you do with yours, whether you make a pin or a little dish. And I have a little, I'll just show you real fast, this little, um, we have this little shadow box frame uh, that's kind of seasonal and I think we'll make some little flowers or something and uh, dress that up. Sometimes we put Christmas trees in there and sometimes we have little gnomes in there. So you might even have something that's fun, just a little seasonal shadow box that you decorate.